into this next song. We're going to proclaim the goodness of our God. We just did that with this last song. Lord, let it be more than just what we sing in a melody. Let it be something more than just a sweet sound to us. We want this to resonate from our hearts, Lord God. The truth of what we're saying, what we're singing, what we're proclaiming, that it would be a sweet sound to you, Lord God. A heart that is willing to worship you no matter what, in the good times, in the bad times. You really are always good. Lord, and we bless you this morning. with our instruments, yes, but more importantly, no matter where we're at, in our living rooms, here in this building today, maybe just sitting outside with our phone, I would encourage all of you to just close your eyes and just sing these truths unto him of how awesome our God really is. He is in control. Nothing takes him by surprise. He is a good God who cares so much for us. Running after, it's running. 
that you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As Ralph continues to play that, let's just let's just praise that waymaker, the light in the darkness. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're turning lives around. You're healing people. God, you're the miracle worker. You're the light in the darkness, Jesus. And Lord, we give you praise and glory and honor for all of that, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, it's with that in our hearts and in our minds today that we come to you with our requests, with our prayers, Lord God. We're, we're depending on you today to do great things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray right now. We're going to believe that God will do miracles. He will be that light in the darkness. He will be that one who... Uh, makes a way where there seems to be no other way. We're going to trust God that he will heal and provide and he will restore and he will save. We're, we're trusting God to do all that and even more. And if you're joining us on our live stream right now, we invite you that if you have a prayer request, if you have a need, if you just type that in the comments right now, we're going to pray for all of those together. And we're going to believe God that he will do what his word says. And here's what his word says. His word says, I am the God who healeth thee. His word says that he is, his name is a strong tower and the righteous can run to that tower and find safety. His word says that he will meet every need of mine according to his riches and glory. The Bible says he will restore what the locust has eaten. The Bible says that though the enemy tries to come to steal, kill, and destroy, God will give us life more abundantly. These are all promises and even more that we have in God's word. So we're going to trust him together that he will touch every need that's represented by those that are watching this live stream, those that are in this room right now. We're going to trust God that he will do great things. And I want us to continue to remember uh, Tony DiGiulio, who continues to recover from surgery. I want us to remember Juanita Di Tommaso, who is also recovering from surgery. And uh, I want us to remember Kelly Hart in our prayers. He will be uh, going to surgery tomorrow. And we're going to trust God that he will completely uh, heal Kelly and be with all that are attending to him tomorrow. And uh, we're believing God for great things because he is a great God. Amen? Amen. So whatever need you have, and maybe you didn't have time to type it in the comments, let me tell you, 
God knows your needs even before we ask. And so we're going to ask him right now that he will touch your situation and touch your family and touch your body and touch your work situation. And he will do that miracle. Are you all ready to pray? God, we just lift up every need that's represented in this, on this day, in this room, by those that are joining us through live stream. God, we're just trusting you that you will uh, lead, that you will guide, that you will heal, that you will provide. God, that you will help uh, sick and broken bodies to recover. We come against pain. We pray that you would take that away. Lord, I ask you that you would be with uh, Tony and Juanita as they recover, Lord Jesus. Just give them healing mercies, I pray. Lord, I ask you that you would touch uh, Kelly Hart as he goes into surgery tomorrow. Lord, be with the doctor, anesthesiologist, surgeon, every nurse, every person that's going to be uh, tending to him, give them grace and give them wisdom, I pray, Lord. And we pray for the whole family at that time. Jesus, we pray for our country and we pray for our state and we pray for our local communities, Lord Jesus. We thank you that we are seeing uh, things begin to open up. And we're thankful, Lord God, that you are still Lord. Even in the midst of all we've been through, you have not stopped being Lord. So again, we come against this virus, and we come against uh, everything that it has impacted and affected, and we just pray, Lord God, right now, that as the enemy has tried to come in like a flood, Jesus, we pray that you would lift up a standard against that, and God, that we would see healing and restoration for every person who needs it, Lord God. I pray for the person who's lonely. I pray for the person who's full of anxiety. Jesus, may your presence fill them in, in the mighty name of Jesus that you would touch them. And God, we'll thank you for all you do. We'll give you praise for all you do. And we ask all of this and we believe you that you will do it. In your mighty name, Jesus, we pray this. And God's people said, amen. amen. Or typed, amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, thank you, worship team, so much for... Uh, your ministry, and uh, uh, Jen and Kenny are going to be ministering in song in just a little bit. But uh, first, we want to welcome all of you that are here today, and we thank the Lord that you have chosen to worship with us today. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you're joining us on the live stream, welcome, and uh, we hope that uh, this has been, in fact, we know, we know this has been a blessing to so many people, and it's just our desire that that would continue. I ask you that uh, if you're, if you're visiting, and when I say that, if you're uh, normally not from uh, Bethel Church, we, we'd love to know where you're from, uh, so let us know uh, what state you're from, or city, or whatever. We promise not to send you spam or things that you need to forward 78 times so that Jesus blesses you. Uh, we, we, we don't do that anymore. Uh, we, we just, uh, we just want to say thanks for coming. So welcome, welcome, and we're glad that you're here. And uh, Bethel Church family, I'm glad you're here as well. Um, so many of you are asking me when we're going to open church again, and um, we, we have not made an official decision yet, but uh, I think we're just a few weeks away. So if y'all can be patient, uh, we're, we're going to be getting back to whatever normal is supposed to look like. I think we're going to be getting there uh, soon. So thank you for your prayers. And uh, I've expressed this when we've gone online with our prayer times and our live streams, that there's a lot that we need to do as a church as we open things back up. And we need the Lord's help and wisdom in doing that. And he's supplying that for us. And so... We are excited to see everybody again, and that time is coming soon. So thank you for your patience there. Um, let me give you our online schedule for this week. Uh, we will be uh, having a few moments uh, where we can connect online. Obviously, right now, we're live streaming our 10 a.m. service. And uh, tomorrow morning at 11 a.m., I'll have an online power lunch, online chat with those that want to join me, and we just kind of chat things up a little bit. We don't uh, have a huge agenda there, 
And then Tuesday at 7 o'clock, uh, this is for our middle school and our high school students. If, if you're one of our middle and high school students here at Bethel Church, we're going to have a youth Zoom online scavenger hunt is what we're going to do this Tuesday at 7. I've never tried this before, so this is, this is going to be an adventure. And uh, I think I've figured out how to do Zoom and uh, maybe some of y'all can teach me, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get together, and uh, students, I will uh, challenge you to find something in your home and bring it to the camera, and then uh, uh, different points are awarded, and the winner gets a $25 gift, cert or a gift card, $25 gift card to the place of their choice, uh, within reason. And uh, so I hope you'll join me, students. We'll have a lot of fun. So you don't even need to leave your house. We'll just get together on Zoom. It'll be a lot of fun. Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, we have an online Bible study. Friday at 7 p.m., we'll have an online worship night. And you'll be able to worship the Lord uh, together from the comfort of your own home. And we'll be doing that then again this Sunday at 10 a.m. So uh, a lot going on. And we're excited for that. Uh, today is a special day, too. Uh, normally, <laughs> normally, this is the second biggest day of the year for us as far as a crowd goes. And uh, today is Mother's Day. And we want to uh, express our love and our appreciation to every mom and grandma and great-grandma that's watching us and we love you so much, and we appreciate you so much, and uh, we want you to know that while we all can't be together today, uh, we give honor to you, and we're going to pray for a blessing for you. Uh, and before I go any further, we have a special video to show you, uh, especially for all your moms, so watch here on the screen. Today is a unique day. And it's far bigger than we think, because there are many different kinds of mothers, and all are being honored today. For the mother who's chosen to stay at home while her children are little, may your patience be great and your influence even greater. For the single mom who never planned on doing this alone, may you be consistently strengthened by your Heavenly Father, and may you hear His voice singing over you. For the mother who strives to balance work outside the home with love inside the home, may you be given energy, validation, and hope as you make the leap from one world to another every day. For moms who had poor mothers themselves, but who now refuse to let that pattern repeat itself, may the godly legacy you've started be carried on for generations to come. For mothers with grown adult children, may today be filled with laughter and joy, and may you experience deep satisfaction and fulfillment. For women who have no biological children of their own, but who mother younger women as mentors, may you understand your role as a calling from God and as a transformation of their hearts. Today is a unique day. So for all the mothers we mentioned, and even those we didn't, be blessed, be honored, be filled with joy. You are making the world a better place because you're filling it with a love that only a mom can give. Boy, did you miss something special while you were watching that video. <laughs> so anyway, that's just for us to know. Uh, but moms, we love you, seriously. And uh, I want to pray for a blessing for you. And uh, I want to encourage everybody here to honor your mom, your, your, your grandma, your great-grandma. And, uh, you know, don't make them do the dishes today. Now, that doesn't mean stack them all up for her to wash tomorrow, okay? So you... Maybe you can do the dishes or, or whatever your tradition is. I'm going to fire up the grill, and uh, uh, if the weather cooperates, we're going to try to go golfing t 
today, so we're going to have a good time together. So just spend time, make contact, connect with your, your mom and your grandma and your great-grandma. It's, uh, they, they are a blessing. So I want to pray for every mom that's uh, represented here and ask God to uh, just give you a year where God blesses you with grace and wisdom and patience and anything you need. Uh, different ones of us are at different stages of life, and moms, maybe your kids are very young. Uh, maybe you've got kids that are in that adolescent time. Maybe you've got middle or high school kids. Uh, maybe your kids are adults. Maybe you're a, a grandparent now, and you're spoiling, you're spoiling the grandkids so much and just sending them back home. And at whatever, whatever stage you're at, we're going to pray for you. And that God would, uh, would bless you, especially on this day and the rest of this year. So join me in prayer, would you? God, thank you for the moms that are represented here today. I thank you for the Bethel Church moms. God, there are so many that have uh, uh, been used of so mightily. So God, we pray for grace for every mother that's represented, whether they be in this room or on this live stream. God, that you would uh, grant them all that they need, whatever stage that they might be. And if there are some that are even going through some kind of transition, Lord, I pray that you would, uh, you would bless that. And uh, I, I especially pray for um, our moms during this challenging time. Uh, some have had to, who work, have had to work from home and watch kids at the same time. Some have had to become a homeschool teacher all of a sudden. Uh, a lot has been thrown at a lot of our moms. But Lord, I pray that you would just touch them and bless them with grace. And thank you for their hard work. We pray for your blessing upon all of them. And God, I want to thank you for the spiritual moms that exist in this church family. God, I've seen this dynamic play out so many times. I've seen it with my son. I've seen it with other young people where uh, moms and grandmas have come in and they have just blessed young people in a special way at those special moments. God, thank you for that. And I pray a special blessing upon them as well. Jesus, we ask you that you would uh, guide every mom throughout the rest of 2020 and uh, in, into next year. God, may we look back in the year and say, look what God has done and give you praise for that. So Jesus, thank you, we love you, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God, thank you so much for praying. We're, uh, we're going to give you a chance, if you'd like to give online, uh, we're going to encourage you to do so. Uh, while Jen and Kenny are ministering in song, and again, the, the website, the web address is bcot.org slash give. And so many of you, I, I can't say this enough, how so many of you have blessed uh, the church during this crazy coronavirus time. You have been so faithful, and I thank the Lord for that. I, I, I am blown away by God's faithfulness through you. So thank you for your online gifts. Thank you for uh, gifts that you have sent to the church address. And uh, we're especially going to pray that God would bless your finances and your job situation. Uh, some of you are going back to work in the next few moments, uh, next few days, and that's exciting. So we pray that God helps you transition back the way that you need to. And uh, so let's, let's do that. Let's join together and pray. And then uh, Jen and Kenny are going to bless us in song. So Lord, once again, we come to you. We can't come to you enough. And we pray, God, that you would bless the finances of the church. God, every gift that's been given this week or is about to be given, Lord, I pray that you would make us wise stewards of it. Lord, that we would uh, use it in a way that brings glory and honor to you. Lord, I pray that you would uh, touch every person re-entering into work. God, I pray for those that are still out of work. Lord, that you would... Uh, Bless their finances and touch them, I pray. God, there are some that have been going to work every day since this whole thing started. 
I pray for your continued protection upon them. And Lord, we'll thank you. We'll give you praise. Bless this ministry in music now. In Jesus' name, amen. It's there in the newborn cry and there in the light of every sunrise and there in the shadows of this life your great grace it's there on the mountain top there in the every day and the mundane there in the sorrow and the dancing your great grace oh such grace from the creation to the cross there from the cross into eternity your grace finds me. Yes, your grace finds me. It's there on a wedding day. There in the weeping by the graveside. There in the very breath we breathe, your great grace. And the same for the rich and poor. And the same for the saint and for the sinner. And now for this whole wide world, your great grace. Oh, such grace. From the creation to the cross, there from the cross into eternity, your grace finds me. Yes, your grace finds me. Is night of the soul, and there in the sweetest songs of victory, your grace finds me. Yes, your grace finds me. Your great grace, oh, such grace, your great grace. Such grace. Oh, 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 oh. So I'm breathing in your grace and breathing out your praise. I'm breathing in your grace forever. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Jenny and Kenny, and uh, we appreciate your ministry there in song. I want to invite you on this Mother's Day to turn to the book of First Kings today. We're still in the Old Testament again. Uh, been lingering a lot in the Old Testament in this time, and it still counts. Can you say amen? 
Yes, it still counts. And uh, we're going to take a look actually at, at most of the, of the chapter, but we're going to start our thoughts on verse 7 of, uh, of this chapter, of 1 Kings chapter 17, starting in verse 7. The title of this message is this, A Mom, a Mother, and a Miracle. A Man, a Mother, and a Miracle. Uh, this is a pretty interesting passage of scripture here today. That uh, I, and it, it was, it's funny. This sermon has actually gone through about three rewrites, and so uh, this is the this is the final product, I believe, unless God changes it during the sermon. So, God help us all. But First uh, Kings seventeen, and I want to begin in verse seven today. I, I am not one that preaches on Mother's Day just to moms. Uh, because that leaves a significant part of our congregation out. Rather, I like to try to focus on a particular mom uh, on Mother's Day and learn a lot from her and what took place around her. And today is one of those days as we look at a man, a mother, and a miracle. So why don't you join me starting in verse 7 of 1 Kings. And if you don't have your Bibles... You can follow on the screen, and we'll have all the scriptures for you on the screen as well today. So here we go. Let's start in verse 7. Sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him. And this is Elijah, by the way. Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath, and when he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? And as she was going to get it, he called, And bring me, please, a piece of bread. Verse 12 says, As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me, and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Sometime later, the son of the woman who owned the house became ill. He grew worse and worse and finally stopped breathing. She said to Elijah, what do you have against me, man of God? Did you come to remind me of my sin, uh, sin and kill my son? Give me your son, Elijah replied. And he took him from her arms, carried him to the upper room where he was staying, and laid him on his bed. And then he cried out to the Lord, Lord my God, have you brought tragedy even on this widow Am I st I'm staying with by causing her son to die? And then he stretched himself out on the boy three times and cried out to the Lord, Lord my God, let this boy's life return to him. The Lord heard Elijah's cry, and the boy's life returned to him, and he lived. And Elijah picked up the child and carried him down from the room into the house. And he gave him to his mother, and he said, Look, your son is alive. And the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord from your mouth is the truth. Let's pray one more time. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your word. It's so powerful. We pray, God, that now the presentation of it and the reception of it would be even as powerful today. And you would speak to all of us, Lord, and that you would change us and do something great in each of our hearts and our lives. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. And we all said amen. amen. A man a mother, and a miracle. 
uh, I bet you can guess what my three points will be today. Pretty easy. A man, a mother, and a miracle. Probably the reason why this sermon had about two or three rewrites is because there's so much in here. I honestly think that I could do uh, an entire month-long series on the passage of Scripture that we just read. And uh, I, want to, <laughs> I want to be as brief as I can, but also I want to give you as much as I can here today because there's so much for us to digest. So I want to jump right into this, okay? So I want to take a look at what I would say are three important parts of this story. Three very important parts of this story. And we're going to kick right off with the very first, you guessed it, Sesame Street fans. This is brought to you by the letter M today. Let's take a look at the first part, and that is the man, Elijah. Uh, Elijah had been used mightily up to this point and was going to be used even more after this story. But here we're at a point where uh, we kind of catch uh, Elijah in between one season and then going to another season as far as his ministry goes. Again, take a look at verses 7, 8, 9, and 10, just real fast, real fast. It says this, Some time later the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And then the word of the Lord came to him, Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. And so he went to Zarephath. Now, to get a little bit of background on this passage here today, I want to back up to the beginning of the chapter. Uh, really starting in verse 2, this helps us kind of get a little bit of uh, balance as far as what's going on in Elijah's life. Verse 2 says, When the word of the Lord came to Elijah... Leave here, turn eastward, and hide in the Kareth Ravine east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. So he did what the Lord had told him. He went to the Kareth Ravine east of the Jordan, and he stayed there. Hang with me. And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. So this is pretty incredible. Uh, Elijah is at a time where he's kind of fleeing for his life, and he is led here by God, and he is supernaturally blessed by what some would say is maybe the very first example of DoorDash, uh, where uh, he is being fed bread and meat. Let's just call it sausage pizza. Let's just call it burgers, whatever. Uh, but he's being fed supernaturally, miraculously, by birds, by ravens. And he has his own personal water supply in the brook. And so things are going pretty well. Elijah is experiencing the supernatural. Elijah is experiencing some pretty amazing, miraculous God stuff in his life. Things are going great. And then that takes us to verse 7, where it kicks off our text where it says, after DoorDash is coming via the birds, and after having his personal water supply, and everything's going great, he's eating, he's being taken care of, all of a sudden this brook that he was able to drink from all the time has dried up. It's dried up. He was experiencing the supernatural, but then that supernatural water supply and the birds, that was gone. Things changed. How do you handle it when God blesses you supernaturally, but then that personal season of blessing is over. See, I've seen a lot of people who have taken that moment and they have walked away from God. Hey, where's, where's my water supply? Where's the birds? Where's my burgers? 
I, I, what's going on? God, you're changing things up on me. God, you're leading me to a different place in my life. And what's interesting here is that God, <laughs> oh, I want you to get this. God sent him to a place called Zarephath, okay? Now, that may not mean much to a lot of people listening, probably none of us, except for this. Do you know what Zarephath literally means? Fiery trial. <laughs> hey, Elijah, have you enjoyed the free stuff, the free burgers and, and all the water you can drink? That's been great, right? Yes, yes, it's been great. I don't even have to tip the birds. It's wonderful. It's really great. Good. Well, guess what? I'm going to move you now from that moment, <laughs> and I'm going to lead you not only to go to a fiery trial, but God told him to go to fiery trial city, to Zarephath, go there and stay there. God, that doesn't sound very fun. God, I think I'd rather just social distance myself right here by this brook. I am sure the water's going to come back soon. I'm sure one bird's going to find a burger he can drop my way. I'd rather just stay here. I'm, I'm comfortable here. I'm happy here. I don't want a trial. I don't want a fiery one. And I don't want to linger at fiery trial. I want to stay where the birds in the brook are. What do you do when your brook dries up? How do you handle that? See, I can tell you that this is one of the biggest challenges that people who have been around God for a while deal with is that the blessing is coming and God's providing, and that's good. We believe that the Bible is all about promises like that. But then there's moments where God will lead us to experience Zarephath, and we have no idea except for the fact that God said that there was somebody there for him to bless. See, here's the deal. You're wondering why you're going through your trial. Why am I, I? I was all blessed, 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 blessed. It was great. I was living the blessing and whatever else song you want to quote. But now here I am. I'm in fiery trial. Why do you want me to go to fiery trial? Because maybe, just maybe, God has placed somebody in there for you to bless while you're there. Dare I say, and, and oh, we don't like this, I don't like it, <laughs> but I have no problem leading and thriving and ministering and blessing other people in moments of strength. I don't particularly find myself wired to want to minister to anybody when I'm in fiery trial city, when I'm in Zarephath. And here Elijah is being led to this city, literally named fiery trial, because there is somebody who needs to have their life touched and blessed by Elijah. Could it be, friend, could it be that you find yourself in the same place as Elijah? You find yourself in the same place as this man that we're talking about here today. And you have experienced the goodness of God like we just sang about. You can say, God, you've been good. But now you find yourself going to Zarephath and it's like, what is this all about? Trust me, there is somebody in your path that God wants to use you to bless. Don't miss this. God has a purpose even in the pain. Let me say it again. God has a purpose, even in the pain. We don't like Zarephath. We certainly don't want to go there. We definitely don't want to stay there. 
but sometimes God will actually allow us to go there because he's got a plan. And that brings us to the second part of this story. See, we've looked at the man. Experience is supernatural, but then his season changes. And now we look at this unnamed mother. Not sure what her name is. I don't think we ever find it in Scripture. But wow, was she at a critical point in her life. You see, Elijah, when you find yourself going to Zarephath, look around you, because there will be people who have it worse than you. Should I say that again? To those of us who think that we're the only ones going through a trial, to the, and I'm not here to minimize your pain, but I'm tired of maximizing your pain as well. Let, let me just say that there are going to be people around you who, quite honestly, They've got it worse than you do. And we see this in this mom. Take a look starting in verse 10. Here's what he encounters. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? And as she was going to get it, he called, And please bring me a piece of bread. And as sure, verse 12, As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread. Only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home. Do, uh, go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. And then make something for yourself and your son. Verse 14 says, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. And she went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Wow. Now it makes sense. Now it makes sense why Elijah was led from the supernatural time where he's been fed by ravens and drinking at the brook. Now it makes sense why he was led to Zarephath. There was a woman there who needed a miracle and God used Elijah to be instrumental in that miracle taking place. And I got to believe that those who are watching today, There are probably some people, man or woman, who can identify with this woman, this mom, who was going through so much. For example, this woman was familiar with sorrow. This woman was familiar with sorrow. The scripture that we just read says she was picking up sticks to to make a fire to bake what little flour she had left to make a meal, a final meal for her and for her son so that they could eat their last meal together and then die. Wow. Can you picture that kind of hopelessness? Can you picture that kind of sorrow? But yet I will tell you, we have people all around that are facing that kind of sorrow. No, they're not gathering up sticks at the local park, but they don't know how the bills are going to be paid. They're not even sure how they're going to be able to provide for their family. They're not sure what's going to happen in the future. Uh, Their job situation is so uncertain. What they're facing right now is so difficult. There are just no answers. In fact, instead of answers, there is hopelessness everywhere. This woman knew what it was to be sorrowful. If that's you today, i got good news for you. Keep listening. Because not only was this woman familiar with sorrow, but this woman was also familiar with what I call submission. Submission. (laughs) Now, we benefit from knowing the end of the story. Okay? Okay? But I want you to get this. Okay? Now, Elijah's role 
literally, he is the mouthpiece of God. He is the spokesperson for God. This is before we had the scriptures. This is before we had the Holy Spirit living within each of us after Jesus rose from the dead. Right now, God is working through and in Elijah to be his mouthpiece. And here, this mouthpiece of God is telling this woman who's gathering sticks to eat one last meal of bread before she dies with her kid, hey, make me some bread. And while you're at it, I'm thirsty too. And can you whip up one of those burgers like the birds gave me earlier? Because those are like awesome. This didn't make sense. This woman is down to the very, very end of her supplies. And she is told to make something for the man of God. Literally, she is told to obey a very strange command from God. Don't lose this. Don't lose this. This woman easily could have said, get your own bread. What's wrong with you? We're starving here. I am at a place of weakness. I think God will understand if I ignore this command. And you know what? I have heard this time and time again. Well, I'm, not, I'm going through a rough time right now, so in all honesty, I think God's going to understand if, uh, if I don't obey what the Word says. You know what? This person really hurt me, so I think God's going to understand if I don't forgive them. You know what? I, I, I'm just going to kind of back off of my devotion to the Lord because this shouldn't be happening to me anyway because I am this. And, and all of a sudden, we have justification for not obeying the word of God. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's one thing to obey God when it's easy to do so. Okay? No problem with thou shalt not kill. I'm good with that. At least today, I am good with that today. <laughs> Those of you who are joining us for the first time, by the way, I am not a serial killer at all. <laughs> or at least you can't prove that. But so, so I, have no, I have no problem with those big ones, right? right? But, but then, when it'd be easier for me to lie than it is to tell the truth, when it'd be easier for me to not give uh, and hang on to my money instead of follow God's word to be a giver of my time and my talent and my treasure, uh, and, and I could justify it any way I want to. In fact, I can make it sound really, really good. And, and, and maybe I'm really angry at this person, so rather than, than forgive them, especially if they're a brother or sister in Christ, they've got it coming, by the way, right? So I'm not going to forgive them. In fact, I'll try to make their life miserable, and I'll gossip about them. I might even post about them on social media, and I'll do all this and all this because, well, I think God understands this exception, and the problem is that when we find ourselves in our desperate moments that we often try to find exceptions to following the word of God. And Elijah here is saying, hey, I am, I am telling you, do this thing that makes no sense. Just do it. And she submitted and she did it. If it doesn't make sense to you to obey this, that's the time you really need to obey it. If it goes against your nature, welcome to Christianity. Because that's how this works. It's like, it's like there's stuff in this book that I am told that I need to do to become more like Christ. I don't know why I'm lingering on this, but, but here we go. There's so much that this book tells me that I have to do to become like Christ. And it totally goes against my nature. It totally against how, it goes against how I'm wired. And that's the time I really need to obey it. This woman was, I got I to gotta move on. This woman was familiar with sorrow. She was familiar with submission. And thank God she was familiar then with the supernatural. She was familiar with sorrow. She was familiar with submission. And she was familiar with the supernatural. She saw supernatural provision just like Elijah did in the past. And God gave her an endless supply of bread, an endless supply 
on oil. Oh, man, that's another sermon altogether. But God gave her this endless supply, always meeting her need. Supernaturally, somehow, the oil never ran dry. Somehow, the flour never ran out. And she was able to supply food for herself, for her kid, and for Elijah, who ended up staying with them at her residence. Incredible. She saw the supernatural. She saw the blessing of God. Now, if we ended this story right here, that would be amazing. But we can't. We can't. Because there's verse 17. I don't like verse 17. And some of us have verse 17s. We're going through them right now. This is after Elijah has experienced the supernatural blessing of God, led to Zarephath. It makes sense. He blesses this mom. She obeys the commands. She uh, experiences the supernatural blessing of God. It's good. But then verse 17. It says, sometime later, the son of the woman who owned the house became ill. He grew worse and worse and finally stopped breathing. Are you kidding me? After, after all that? After all that, God? I mean, I... I prayed to you. I did what your word says to do. You came through for me. And now, now look what's happened. Now look what's taken place. Things were going so good. Now what does my testimony look like? I've experienced what I feared the most. Can I speak to people today who have experienced the blessing of God, but after that, the devil showed up for a second attack? People who have experienced supernatural answers to prayer, and it was good, but sometime later, verse 17 came. Sometime later, something bad happened after the blessing. People who used to go to church will not even darken a church now because they've never dealt with the verse 17s in their lives. They were good until verse 16. but then 17. How do, you, how do you deal with those moments when the enemy comes in for a second attack? Folks, remember the third part of this story. We saw the man and the blessing. We saw the mom and the blessing. But guess what? God has set all this up for another miracle. Your verse 17 does not end your story. You got to hear me. Your, your bad moment, your setback, and again, I, I, I don't make light of it at all. The pain that you're facing now, even after you experience the goodness of God, the trouble you're experiencing now, even after you experience the, 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 the triumph of God, and now there's trouble. But God's setting all this up for yet another miracle. Look at verse 18. Let's get off verse 17. Verse 18 says, She said to Elijah, what, have you, what do you have against me, man of God? Did you come to remind me of my sin and kill my son? Elijah replied with this, Give me your son. And he took him from her arms, carried him to the upper room where he was staying, laid him on his bed. 
Then they cried out to the Lord, Lord my God, have you brought tragedy even on this widow I am staying with by causing her son to die? Verse 21 says, Then he stretched himself out on the boy three times and cried out to the Lord, Lord my God, let this boy's life return to him. And the Lord heard Elijah's cry, and the boy's life returned to him, and he lived. And Elijah picked up the child and carried him down from the room into the house, and he gave him to his mother and said, Look, your son is alive. And verse 24 says, Then the woman said to Elijah, Oh, get this, now I know that you're a man of God, and that the word of the Lord from your mouth is the truth. That last phrase is huge. The word of the Lord from your mouth is true. God had a purpose even in the midst of the pain, even when the devil came in for a sequel. Sometimes I hate sequels, don't you? Is there like a Rocky 24 now? What's... But when the enemy comes in for another episode, another sequel, that's hard for us because we just want to live in the blessing and we want to live in the victory. So what's interesting here is that Elijah experienced the supernatural and it stopped for a new season. The mom experienced the supernatural, but it stopped for a new season. And perhaps you're right there where you, you've experienced the goodness of God, but for some reason things have kind of come to a halt and now there's this new season and it's not very pretty. God's getting ready to do a miracle. And, and let, let, me, <coughs> let me just tell you that some of the greatest hurdles that we will ever face in our lives is when the devil comes in for a second attack. Some of the biggest hurdles we'll ever have to jump will be those moments. And, and let, me, let me make myself real clear here. Because this woman's reaction is interesting. She's like, what do you have against me? And, and let me just say that when, when these things happen, our minds go everywhere. The enemy will try to plant lies in our head, right? Saying, well, you must not have been faithful enough. Well, God's getting you now for something you did 25 years ago. Well, uh, this is why it's happening because you didn't pray two weeks ago last Thursday, and so now you're going to get it. And, and that's, that's just not the way God operates. This had nothing to do with her doing something, the mom doing something incorrectly. In fact, this had nothing to do with any sin in her life. This had nothing to do with God going after somebody. And I hear this stuff time and time again. I must not have done something right, so God's getting me. Oh, I must have... Uh, I must have a sin issue. Or someone told me just what we need to hear at our time of trial. Well, is there sin in your life? Oh, in the name of Jesus, shut up with that. This is not, boy, I offended someone. But this is not about that. Sometimes bad things happen to really good people. It's how we respond to these moments. And this is what we can learn right now. If, if you're at that moment, pre-miracle, post-supernatural, post-blessing, pre-miracle, you're right there, man. You're right there at verse 17, going into verse 18. You're right there. Then let me give you some instruction. I'm going to wrap this up. Number one, verse 19, I, I see this. Bring your need to the Lord. <clears throat> Bring your need to the Lord. Again, Elijah was God's spokesman, the prophet Elijah. And Elijah said, bring that boy to me. Bring this situation to me. I will take this to God. It is time to bring our needs, not to a preacher, not to a priest. Let's just bring them to God. That's the beauty of of the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The veil has been torn, folks. We have access directly to the Lord. There's no in-between that we have to go through. 
And so today, if you find yourself where the enemy has come in for a second wave of attack, even after a blessing, this is the time to go to the Lord. This is not the time to try to do things by yourself. This is not the time to distance yourself from God. This is the time to bring yourself closer to the Lord. Bring your need to the Lord. Secondly, lift your prayers to the Lord. Pray. Pray, pray, pray. A lot of people ask me, what can, what can I do for you, Pastor, during this whole coronavirus thing? You pray for me. Nothing could be greater than for you to pray. Nothing. Chocolate cake is second, but nothing. <laughs> but seriously, pray. You can do nothing better than pray. Thirdly, we said bring your need to the Lord, lift your prayers to the Lord. Third, and this is huge, trust the methods of the Lord. <laughs> I'm kind of glad that Elijah didn't spell out what was going to go on in the room upstairs. Verses 21, 22, and 23 says, Elijah took him, placed him on his bed, and he laid on top of the, guy three of the kid three times and prayed. I promise you that will not be any kind of altar call here at this church, okay? Especially, this, that is not social distancing. Can I have an amen? And you might ask, well, why, why did he do that, pastor? I'm going to give you the most theological answer I can give you here. From my, this from a Bible degree, this is from my education, my experience in studying the Word of God, and here it is. I I have no idea. Is that too close? I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why God does some of the stuff he does. But here's, here's what I know. I know the result's going to be amazing. Don't miss this. Life came even after a strange set of methods that God used to bring life to that situation. Mm. You, you may not be quite fond of the methods that God wants to use to bring life to your situation. In fact, it may be a little bit uncomfortable, unorthodox, and not what you are really wanting yourself. But if you just trust the Lord and his ways and his methods you will see life come back where there has been death and here's the last one and ralph if you can help me that'd be great we bring our need to the lord we lift our prayers to the lord we trust the methods of the lord and we give the glory to the lord All the glory goes to God. I'm so, I'm so thankful, and, and I think Elijah had a lot to do with this. But Elijah is carrying this boy, living, and literally brings him to mama. He said, your son's alive. And she said, now I know you're a man of God. But again, that last part, and I know that the words that come out of your mouth are the words of the Lord, and they are true. Don't miss this. You see, when God brings life where there was death, when God brings that miracle, do you know what his intentions are? His intentions are for you to understand that the words that are in this book, breathed by the Holy Spirit, they're true. That he is a healer that he does care about you, that, that you are precious to him, that he supplies needs, that he restores what the enemy is broken, that he provides shelter, that you can do all things through him who gives you strength, that I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. It, it, it makes sense now. It makes sense. God, when you come through for me, you're showing me that this stuff 
is real and your word is true and that you are faithful. And the glory goes to God. Who am I talking to today? I, I'm, I'm talking to some people like Elijah who experienced the goodness and the provision and the blessing of God. And, and for some reason, that has that part of your season, that season has ended and God is taking you to a place and on the surface, it doesn't seem very comfortable. He's taking, he's taking you to a fiery trial city. But he's got a plan. He's got a purpose. Who am I talking to? I'm, I'm talking to those that, I, that can identify with the mom. You're desperate. You're struggling. Maybe you've lost hope. But God has somehow shown up. Maybe he's speaking to you now. And he's instructing you. He's reminding you, just obey what my word says. Trust me. Just obey me. And you'll see the supernatural. Or maybe I'm talking to the residents of that widow's house. All the bread you want. The provision is supernatural there. But something seriously wrong has happened. Something's come in that has thrown a monkey wrench into your life. It, it, it's, maybe it's even kind of wrecked you. Bring the boy to God. Bring the situation to God. Bring your finances to God. Bring the situation to God. Bring your trial and your trouble to God. Bring it all to the Lord today and let him take your need. And let him breathe the breath of life so that life comes where there has been death. I, I don't know where you fit in this thing, but I do know this. All three parts of this story ended with the supernatural. I've got to believe that wherever you fit in this story, the man, the mother, or the miracle, that the supernatural, it's on its way. If you just obey him, do what he says, trust his methods, don't give up, don't give up, don't shy away from God, stay faithful to him. I'm going to give you a chance to respond and to worship as Ralph leads us. And I'm trusting God. I'm trusting God that he will let you know that the supernatural is on its way. Will you pray with me? And you respond to the Lord in the way that you need to. Heavenly Father, I pray for those that have experienced the blessing of God, but God, you're moving them on to some different season. You're, you're, you're bringing them in contact with somebody that you never would have, we never thought we would ordinarily even encounter. So God, I pray that we'd know that there is a purpose and a plan in the midst of the pain. God, some of us, we're hopeless, we're struggling, we're sorrowful like that widow, and, and we just need you to come through for us. So God, I pray that we would not shrink back from obeying you, but God, that we would, we would trust you even when your commands don't make sense. God, for those of us who can say, yes, I've seen your goodness. Yes, I've seen your blessings. Yes, I've seen the supernatural before. But right now, there's death. Right now, there's loss. Right now, there's fear and trial and anxiety and hurt and pain and all of that going on. God, what do I do? Lord, we bring those things right now to you. Move us past verse 17. And God, bring us to our miracle, I pray. And we trust you. Everything that you do, we trust you. And God will give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name.
fire when fear is closing in you are you are my song you're my hope when hope is gone I will cast my cares on you the almighty I will cast my cares on you cause you're good I will cast my cares on you cause you love me you love me oh oh cause you love me in the middle of the night when worry strength is gone in the middle of the fire when fear is closing in you are you are my song you're my hope when hope is gone and I will cast my cares on you the almighty You're my hope. 